Hey everybody, welcome to lab number seven. In this lab, we're going to do a redox reaction. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to mix together two substances. You're looking at the supplies for this lab. In the burette, you'll see a purple liquid. That's the potassium permanganate. The important part of the potassium permanganate is the permanganate ion. The manganese in permanganate is going to reduce in this chemical reaction. The other substance that we're going to mix together is hydrogen peroxide. Now the oxygen in hydrogen peroxide is going to get oxidized. Isn't that interesting? Oxygen gets oxidized. Good joke, call me. But seriously, the other substance there is the three molar acid. The presence of the three molar acid in this experiment is essential in order for this reaction to go off without any glitches. If you do not add the acid, you will get a very unsatisfying brown sludge in the bottom of your analyte. All right, well, let's get started with the lab. Remember, you need to jot down these steps to make sure that you document a procedure. I got my goggles, I'm ready to go. So the first thing I wanna do is take the hydrogen peroxide and using a little plastic pipette, I suck out approximately one to two milliliters and I measure it out in this graduated cylinder. I double check to make sure I write down the exact amount of hydrogen peroxide and make sure that I add it into my data table here. Next, I'm going to take the three molar acid and I'm going to add one squirt or two squirts, one and a half to two squirts, into the analyte, the hydrogen peroxide, to ensure that the experiment is carried out in acidic conditions. Give it a little swirl and transfer it to this Erlenmeyer flask to get ready for the titration, make sure making sure I get every last drop out. Place it under the burette, get your burette ready, and now it's time. So I take a look at the starting amount and make sure that I get as precise of a measurement as possible. The burette goes out to the tenth of a milliliter, so I make my reading to the one hundredth of a milliliter. And I get it, making sure and double checking, and I jot down my starting amount of titrant in my data table. Now it's time for the titration. I sped this up so that it didn't take too much time, but I will slow it down here at the end. As you can see, I'm delivering the purple liquid into the analyte and you can see that the color is changing from a brown to a purple and as I swirl the color disappears. Just like in an acid base titration you'll know that you're going to stop when you get a sustained color change here at the end. So I'm getting near the end and I'm going to add one last drop and that drop is going to change the liquid from a clear and after I swirl it it will be a faint pink and I know I finished the experiment. I know it's difficult to see the pink color but trust me it's slightly pink. Here's a look at my data table. I did three trials. You can see the starting amount of H2O2 that I use. That's a hydrogen peroxide. And you can use, see how much titrant I use. You can use these numbers to now calculate the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide. Remember, I purchased this and it says 3% on the side of the bottle. But the investigation in this lab is to see how close to 3% it really is. So your calculations, you're going to see if the brand bottle is actually 3%. Well, that takes care of this lab, lab number seven. Thanks for watching.